Okay, what we got here is the D1 diodes backwards. So this is the normal positive uh, going out from the uh, transformer as Don Smith claimed he was doing. So we have the negative pulse going into ground. It's very stable. This frequency stays 120 to 130 for last for about an hour straight. I don't see any of these odd uh, discharges going on here either like we do with the uh, diodes the other direction. So we got both lights on. Although it was a little hard to start this thing unless I adjusted the spark gap after an hour. It wouldn't restart. Uh, I had to adjust the spark gap to get it back uh, fired up. And that thing can adjust. There it is. We're running a full 115 volts AC. And this is the frequency here. Very stable. It'll stay here. It'll jump to 123 but much more stable. The odd thing about this circuit, in fact, here's a circuit here. <clears throat> Diodes like normal. This is what Don Smith claimed he was doing. Uh, so we have a, we have full wave rectification here, although it's not as good as a full bridge rectifier. It's uh, very clean when it comes to putting a uh, when I put a meter down here. Um, it's on the lights, two lights in series. Uh, when I put a digital meter across here. Uh, <clears throat> this is definitely DC here, and the AC uh, noise, the ripple is very low. It's like 0.5 volts, and it's 190 something on a, a digital meter. It's showing about 220 on the analog. Uh, a couple things I wanted to say here. <clears throat> when I'm running these backwards, uh, this, the spark gap here, this one right here. Let me think here. Yeah, this is the one that goes. This no, this one here, the one that goes to ground, runs cold. It'll run cold to touch. This spark gap whole housing will be running 180, 220, 270 degrees, and this is cool to the touch. Uh, so the cold electricity that they were talking about has a little bit of val uh, verification in that aspect right there, just from that fact. This will be running very hot over here. It'll run almost the same body. It's not quite as hot as the body, but it'll run. This is running 220. That'll run. You can't even barely touch that thing for a split second. So it's running hot over here. That's when the diodes are backwards. When they're in this direction here, both of these electrodes are cool. This body can be running 220 degrees. These Both of these are running under 80 degrees. So um, it's cool to the touch. Uh, so that's the strange thing about these diodes, direction. Definitely affects <clears throat> uh, the electron flow and all that stuff. Heat transfer. Mm, what else are we going to say? I think that's it. Uh, this is basically the same circuit as the other last video. Same components in there. Just the only thing I did different was turn the diodes back. I said much more stable on the frequency. And you can see it's jumping up a little bit here. It's not quite 120. This is a 60 cycle uh, system, and the full wave uh, rectifies that to 120, which is natural. It should be there. So you're getting a little bit of noise there. But the uh, circuit, uh, even after an hour, is very clean. Uh, so it seems to me the diodes are best in this direction for a number of reasons. But it seemed like we had an easier time starting these fluorescent light bulbs in the other direction. Uh, it seemed to be there was much more energy. So I'm probably going to switch them back, the diodes back, and then try to put two or three, or uh, three or four light bulbs in series, see if I can get it to fire that up. If that won't work, then maybe try to put them in parallel. But it usually doesn't work too good in parallel. One will be 
lower resistance the other one want to run and the other one won't so they only seem to those bulbs only seem to work good when you put them in series so there you have it